In 1997, the Philadelphia Eagles did not meet their own high expectations. Yet the season ended with this team together, facing a future more certain than when it began back in August. A young quarterback was in place, and his performance over the season's last six weeks left little doubt that Bobby Hoying is the real deal. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a quarterback. This generation of Eagles features a solid core of young veterans. Men like William Thomas, the two-time Pro Bowl linebacker. Kevin Turner, the throwback fullback. Troy Vincent, the big-time corner. Red Hall, the team leader in quarterback sacks. James Willis, the rapidly improving man in the middle. Steve Everett, the powerful center. Hollis Thomas, the free agent find at defensive tackle. Brian Dawkins, the young safety with an attitude. And Charlie Garner, the explosive back who gives the Eagles a dimension few teams have. And don't forget the old men. 35-year-old Irving Fryer, the miracle man at wide receiver. And Michael Zordich, the rugged safety who's more grit than glitter, more spit than polish. Nineteen ninety-seven was simply a bump in the road, a detour on the path to success. In the end, the playoffs proved elusive, but this team never stopped fighting. Through it all, the Eagles played some of the most exciting football in the NFL. The Philadelphia Eagles looked to the new season with a renewed sense of optimism, and more importantly, a strong nucleus of proven performers. In Philadelphia, it's time for Generation Next. The 1997 home opener matched the Eagles against the Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers. This team is not supposed to be here, but if we don't beat them, they'll beat them. All right? Not only would the Eagles beat the Packers, they would hold the Green Bay offense without a touchdown. It was the first time in 85 games that the Packers did not score an offensive touchdown. All the way back to the sixth game of the 1992 season. Brett Favre's third NFL start. Eagles fans watch the defense forge one of the most impressive performances in recent NFL history. Favre looking, he floats it to Henderson. Henderson take a down, fumbles the football, and the Eagles have it. Eight fellas on the football. First and ten of the Eagles, 42. Get him, get him. Forward, now rush, and it's intercepted by Hall. 25-40, and all the way down to the 15, Red Hole. In the fourth quarter, with the Eagles trailing 9-3, the offense started on their own 20, with more than 11 minutes remaining. They would put together a 19-play drive, controlling the ball for 9 minutes and 22 seconds. On the first play after the two-minute warning, the Eagles score. It is fourth and goal at the Packers' two-yard line. Detmer back. Detmer throws it into the end zone. Touchdown! Yeah! 
In the National Football League, there is a fine line between winning and losing. Never was that more evident than against the Packers. The kick is up. It's no good! He missed it! He missed it! He missed it! 11 seconds to go and the Eagles are going to do it. What's that one say, guys? Man, I'm proud as hell of all of you. Every one of you, I'm proud of you. We talked about it last night. We talked about going out and doing the things we know we could do. Nobody gave us a chance, man. Nobody. Nobody. But guys, I'm telling you, we don't know how good we can be. All we got to do is stay together and keep fighting. We went four quarters. We went 60 minutes of fighting. 60 minutes. Nobody gave up. Nobody. A week later at Texas Stadium, the Eagles made a statement. For 59 minutes, the Eagles dominated the Cowboys. It appeared the national TV audience was witnessing the changing of the guard in the NFC East. But with one minute remaining, a broken play would give Dallas the lead. What happened next had to be seen to be believed. 16 seconds remaining. Cowboys 21. Yarder for the game. Spotted. It's picked up by Hutton. Hutton's running with the football. It's over. He dropped the snap. He never got the snap. The Cowboys escape had a heartbreaking defeat for the Eagles. They had victory just a 22 yard field goal away. This is as tough as it gets. It was clear that the Eagles could compete with the best teams in the NFC, and they were doing it defensively. It was a unit that featured 10 starters under the age of 30. At the corner position, Philadelphia boasts as strong a duo as there is in the NFL. Bobby Taylor, who returned from a knee injury in 1998, and Troy Vincent. Vincent solidified his place as one of the league's finest cover corners with a brilliant effort against the Cowboys' Michael Irvin in the Eagles' victory at the Vet. It was one of the highlights of the 1997 season. The main man at linebacker is William Thomas. Willie T is now a Pro Bowl veteran. And in 1997, he again staked his claim as the most versatile linebacker in the NFL. For the Eagles, Thomas is the playmaker, the impact defender who can change the flow of a game with a single play. On the defensive line, the strength is at the tackle position. Red Hall stepped up to become a big time pass rusher. While Hollis Thomas, the undrafted free agent with the nonstop motor, proved to be a force against the run. Add improving young players like 1997's top two draft choices, John Harris and James Darling, and the second round pick a year earlier, Brian Dawkins, and this is a defense fueled by youthful aggressiveness. Three home games in October, all against NFC East opponents, were dominated by this young defense. Even 35-year-old Michael Zordich got into the act. First, it was the Redskins. They were held to one touchdown as the defense allowed only 228 yards of offense. Then against the Cardinals came seven quarterback sacks. 
Arizona could not do much better than Washington a couple of weeks earlier. The Cards produced only 235 yards of offense. The following week, the Cowboys came to town. They left without seeing the end zone. The result was three victories. It was vintage Eagles football. Tough, aggressive, fighting for 60 minutes. Longer if you have to. Winning is an attitude, a mindset. It's about perseverance and resolve. Qualities that define the play of Kevin Turner. Against the Redskins, it was Turner who proved to be the offensive catalyst. Two weeks later, against the Cardinals, 60 minutes wouldn't be enough. We win the toss, we gotta go score. Listen, we win the toss, we gotta go score. The fight continued in overtime. Led by Rodney Pete, the Eagles found a way to win. Of course, when the Dallas Cowboys come to Veterans Stadium, it's never just another game. In Philadelphia, it's part of your birthright to have strong feelings of dislike for the boys from Dallas. A concussion ended Troy Aikman's afternoon in the first quarter. On this day, the vet was no place for any opposing quarterback. Yet again, victory would rest with the offense late in the fourth quarter. Fourth and 11. This could be the game right here with 2.45 remaining. Eight back, eight setting. He cuts it. He completes it for I think short of a first down. It'll be real close. Look at that referee comes up the field. We'll oh, see it's going to be real it. close. Here it is. Oh, boy. They're going to stretch the chains. He got it. He's got it. He's got it. For the second week in a row, Rodney Pete directed a come from behind victory. Clock ticking 105, 104. It'll be second down. Pete's back. He fires. Everybody on this team dug down deep to get this one done for us. They dug all the way down to the bottom, their souls pull it out. Because we needed everybody. We needed everybody. I'm proud of you guys, man. Got another one next week. Let's get ready for it. The man defies logic. He challenges convention. Irving Fryer is 35 years old. He has played in the NFL for 14 seasons, the last two with the Eagles. He caught 88 passes in 1996, 86 last year. They are the best single season performances in Eagles history. Fryer is the only player to have caught more than 50 passes in each of the last eight seasons. And here's one more measure of his consistency and durability. Entering the 1998 season, only eight receivers in NFL history have caught more balls than the Reverend. The date was November 16th, 1997. On that afternoon at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium, Bobby Hoying made his first NFL start. It was a bold move by the Eagles organization. At four and six, the playoffs still remained within reach. But clearly the season hung in the balance. Its fate was being placed in the hands of a second year quarterback who had taken very few snaps. 
The expected early struggles dramatically turned to late successes as Hoying battled through his inexperience to direct a game-tying fourth-quarter drive. It was the first sign of the poise and maturity that would soon define the young quarterback. Hoy gives the corner up the middle. He's in for the touchdown! Jordan Garner! And the Eagles can tie him with an extra point. There would now be another period to play. And in overtime, Hoying put the Eagles in position to win with the help of an outstanding catch by Freddie Solomon. But after 75 minutes, the game ended in a tie. Yet there was cause for optimism. Bobby Hoying had performed well under pressure. With a new quarterback, the Eagles would return home for three straight games. The 1997 season was clearly on the line. First up at the vet, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Behind an offensive line that featured Jermaine Mayberry, Jerry Crafts, and Steve Everett, Hoying picked apart the vaunted Steelers defense. Across the 15, 10, takes a tackle, he's at the 5, Jason Dunn's in for a touchdown! Ten Eagles, Hoying back, he's setting, he's looking, he is under a rush, he is cutting down the right side, and it is complete the player in the very first out of bounds at the 25! Hoying back under a rush. Hoying and the offense gave the Eagles the lead with two first quarter touchdowns. It would be enough to win as the defense and the special teams produced big play after big play. The result was a season high five turnovers. It was a total team victory over one of the NFL's elite. The football is close and the Eagles are on it. Again, Stewart takes the snap. He's back as all day. Going deep down the far side and it is batted around. And it is going to be intercepted by Matt Stevens. The 1997 Eagles were fighting to the finish. There would be some exciting football coming up at Veterans Stadium as the season hit the home stretch. Bobby Hoying had energized a team and a city. More than anything, he brought a feeling of hope and redemption to a season that had seemingly slipped away. Hoying's back, he's looking, he's still looking, he is going deep, and is caught for a touchdown by Michael Timpson! Against the Cincinnati Bengals, Hoying was masterful. In one stretch that spanned the second and third quarters, he guided the Eagles to five consecutive scores. Back to close one, he's sick, he steps up, he fires, he puts it in for a touchdown, Jimmy Johnson, his third touchdown pass of the game. He's, he's looking, he is loading it for the end zone, and it is. We're waiting for a signal, and they are saying out of bounds, Kevin Turner caught it on the far sideline. Let's see. We're scored out of bounds. It's a touchdown, Kevin Turner! Kevin Turner's remarkable catch near the end of the third quarter highlighted 507 yards of offense. In the fourth quarter, Deuce Staley, the Eagles' third pick in the 1997 draft, set up the final touchdown with this brilliant return. It gave the Eagles a 41-28 lead. Yet with one minute remaining, they found themselves down by a point. It was rite of passage time for Bobby Hoying. Hoying on first down is back. He's looking. He steps up now. He fires. Back goes Hog again. The rush is coming. He fires. He completes it to Solomon. Pushing his way down to the 31. Three receivers to the left. Here it comes. Here comes the blitz. Hoying back. He is looking, floating it to the near side, and it is caught inside the 15 by fire. Inside the 15. This could be the Eagles' season right here. The ball is spotted. The kick is away. It's gone! It's gone! And the gun! And the Eagles win it! The Eagles win it! Finally, the Eagles win it! Generate. 
formation next had arrived. The Eagles had won the first two of their three consecutive home games. As the chill of December settled in, there was a warm sense of renewal at Broad and Patterson. But against the Giants, the growing pains all young quarterbacks encounter seized hoying. At halftime, the Eagles were in a 21-7 hole. But this team never quit. Back goes Cannell. Cannell looking, firing. It is intercepted by Dawkins. 45 midfield. 45-40. 35-30. man at the 25-20. Touchdown! Brian Dawkins. The Eagles are back in the game. But Philadelphia could not come all the way back. The loss to the Giants realistically ended any chance for the playoffs. 1997 proved to be a roller coaster ride of a season. The ups and downs took their toll. But the struggle brought the future of this franchise into sharper focus. In the National Football League, the reality is if you have a big time quarterback, you have a chance to compete. Not only for a playoff spot, but for a championship. In his six starts, Bobby Hoying showed dramatic signs that he could become that kind of quarterback. Big plays produce points in the NFL, and this Eagles offense has its share of playmakers. With the return from injury of wide receiver Chris T. Jones, who caught 70 balls in 1996, and the increased focus on running back Charlie Garner, the 1998 offense will be quick striking, capable of that big play at any time from anywhere on the field. Defensively, the talent is there, and it's young. The challenge will be to take that next step and consistently play the kind of dominating football we saw in the first half of the season before injuries took their toll. Add Bill Johnson, who with the Rams last season made more tackles behind the line of scrimmage than any defensive lineman in the league. And former Jet Hugh Douglas, with 18 quarterback sacks his first two seasons, and this defense will be solid across the board. In 1998, Ray Rhodes begins his fourth season in Philadelphia. You talk about intense, this is a man who has the total respect of his players. Ray Bob, yeah. they might say it crazy, they might say yeah. his tools is loose, they might say all kinds of things about him, and they don't care about him, but we care about him. A new season brings new challenges, and owner Jeffrey Lurie and executive vice president Joe Banner are committed to a future of bold, aggressive leadership. In Philadelphia, the time has arrived for Generation Next.